Hi, welcome to the Applause Series. My name is Donna Fitzgerald. I am a member of the Agawam Cultural Council. We are proud to bring this series to you. If you enjoy it and would like to give a donation, any amount would do, we would appreciate that. And you can do so by visiting our website, www.agawamcc.org. Thank you. Take care. Be safe. Enjoy the show. My name is Scott Sanchez. Thank you for attending tonight's program. The Applause Virtual Concert Series, uh, sponsored by the Agawam Cultural Council, funded by the Agawam Cultural Council. It's quite an honor to be here. I performed for this series in person back in 2018, and I'm excited to be sharing a rich variety of music with you uh, that I think really shows the the, the, the broad textures, the uh, rich textures of the uh, guitar. I'm going to start with two movements from Jazz Box First Cello Suite. Uh, these are uh, the Prelude and the Courant, one of the d dance movements, the Courant. And um, these are two arrangements of mine. The Prelude, I would say, is the most popular, probably of all of the six cello suites, of any movement from the ch cello suites by Bach. Uh, I've heard it on um, tuba, I've heard it on ukulele, classical guitar, and of course cello. I've heard it on so many different instruments. It's a wonderful piece. And, uh, and you know, his, his suites work really well in so many different contexts. And one of the things I love, I just love Bach, but I love about like the cello suites is when you look at the scores, it's just one line of music usually occurring across the page. And it's always, uh, it's always amazing how he's able to create this rich sounding it sounds like there's much more going on than it looks like on the page because he was able to outline the arpeggios and the chords the underlying harmonies of the music so well and as a guitarist one of the joys i have in in um interpreting this music and, and arranging it is transcribing it is just figuring out where to delicately place a few bass notes throughout the score while still staying true to the original uh, uh score of js box so uh I hope you enjoy and looking forward to tonight's program. Thank you. 
Up next on the program are two preludes by the Brazilian composer Via Lobos. These are from a set of five preludes originally composed for the classical guitar. And on the original manuscripts of these pieces, of these preludes, there's a, a handwritten note uh, by Via Lobos that uh, gives, gives us a clue as to maybe the character he was looking for in this music. Um, the, the note or the subtitle, as you could think of it as, on the first piece, or the first prelude is Homage to the Village Country Dweller. The second one is Melodia Cappadocia. And this loose, loosely translates to uh, uh, melody or uh, uh, melody for the Brazilian smarty or uh, uh, Brazilian smart aleck. So a piece for a Brazilian smart aleck. So two preludes by Via Lobos.
Now I'm going to play Three Waltzes by the Venezuelan composer Antonio Lauro. These are uh, three waltzes originally written for the guitar. Antonio Lauro was a guitarist and he understood the capabilities of the guitar. He wrote uh, numerous numbers of these waltzes for the, for the instrument. Um, we're, as guitarists, uh, we are very fortunate to have these, these um, charming pieces, uh, uh, little miniature pieces um, for the instrument. And uh, often in these pieces, he would dedicate them to a, uh, a family member, most often, as in the case of El Nino, the second one. Uh, it's uh, dedicated to his son, uh, his hijo, Leonardo. And the third piece, Maria Luisa, is a dedication to his esposa, his wife, uh, uh, Maria Luisa. And then the first piece uh, is El Marabino. El Marabino refers to an inhabitant of Maracaibo. And one interesting uh, anecdote about, about uh, Antonio Laro's music is that he uh, would be composing all the time feverishly and he'd write these beautiful miniature pieces and then he would get down and he'd sit down for his family and, and, and perform them for him. He'd perform his latest creation. And based on their reaction, if they gave him a positive, upbeat reaction, he thought, okay, I'm done with that piece, and he'd move on to the next project. But if they they um, gave him kind of a lukewarm response, then he knew he needed to work on it a little bit more, and he'd go back into the, his his uh, his studio and, and, and work on it some more and, until he felt that he got a good, positive response from his family. So three waltzes, El Marabino, El Nino, and Maria Luisa by Antonio Laro.
Next, I'm going to play three jazz tunes. Don't Get Around Much Anymore by Duke Ellington. Horse Silver Song for My Father. And Take Five by Paul Desmond. Uh, Don't Get Around Much Anymore. The first piece that I'm going to play is an arrangement of mine. It's uh, a recent arrangement of mine. I've never performed this in concert. The second tune is Horace Silver's Song for My Father, and this is another arrangement of mine. The title refers to a trip that he took back in the 60s to South America, and his, his father had South American roots, and he was inspired uh, by the sounds he heard, and he came back and wrote this bossa nova, he came back to the United States and wrote this bossa nova, a very famous jazz standard today, as is the Don't Get Around Much Anymore. And also Take Five, the third piece I'm going to play, which is also a, a, a brilliant jazz standard today. And it was written by the saxophone player for the Dave Brubeck Quartet, um, Paul Desmond. This is an arrangement uh, by Jorge Morel, uh, um, a great Argentinian guitarist. Um, and uh, he, he wrote this, he arranged this actually at a time when he was playing, Jorge Morel was back as a classical guitarist at the Village Gate down in New York City. He'd play alongside people such as Dave Brubeck and Horace Silver, Thelonious Monk. And uh, he developed a, a unique repertoire of classical guitar pieces and this arrangement such as this, Take Five. So, three jazz tunes.
one of the most famous guitar composers never wrote a note for the guitar. Um, Isak Albanus was actually a pianist, and yet some of his most famous pieces are are the gemstones, the gems of of the classical guitar repertoire, um, as is the case with Majorca and Leyenda. Majorca is of course the uh, the the large island off the coast of of Spain, uh, and the uh, next piece, Leyenda, it is means legend. And uh, Majorca, this is a transcription uh, from the piano score uh, by. Uh, um, my first classical guitar teacher, Mark Switzer. And both of these pieces, you know, I think we all have pieces as, as musicians that make us want to play the instrument. And these are, these are those pieces for me. These are the things that I heard as a kid that made me say, I want to play classical guitar.
Now a short tango, Tango and Sky, by uh, the Tunisian guitarist Roland Dion. Uh, sadly, uh, Roland passed away uh, back in 2016 at the young age of 61. Uh, he was uh, one of my favorite guitarists. Uh, I had the pleasure of hearing him play many times and, and talking to him a little bit over the years. I uh, uh, heard him the first time in England, uh, and I was just, uh, when I was just out of college, and I was just amazed at, at his musicianship. Uh, he played this incredible program of his own compositions and arrangements of, of his, and um, he's, he was a great improviser. This was one of his, uh, I'm sure probably started out as an improvisation of his, and the uh, um, tango and sky, sky refers to kind of, uh, it's kind of a slang term for imitation leather. So tango and sky uh, by Roland Dion. Thank you so much for joining me on this applause concert series, this virtual concert series. And, and thank you um, to the Agawam Cultural Council for sponsoring, providing the funding for this programming. Um, and I'm going to close tonight with uh, two of my arrangements by the Beatles. The first one is And I Love Her. This is from A Hard Day's Night. And the second one is Blackbird from the White Album. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.